If you have an electric car, or maybe a fleet of them, then, like me, you're probably interested in data. What's the power consumption? How fast does it charge? All that stuff. Well, if that's the case, then I've got a treat for you today, because I've got an electric car and an interesting gadget to play with. All right, this is an OBD2 connector, and you already know what that is. You've seen these before, right? You plug them into the diagnostic port, you get all the data out of the car, like how much energy is it using, etc., etc. But this one's different. I promise you, you haven't seen anything like this before. Because yes, it's an OBD2 connector, but it gets so much more data than anything else I've ever seen before. It has a SIM card in it, it's got an accelerometer, a GPS tracker, and it also connects to a database that watches the car from a satellite. And more. Honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I know what you're thinking, how, how much more data could you get out of this? Well, you're going to get excited about this because I am. And no, this is not an advertisement. They're not paying me anything to, to play with this. They just said, hey, you might be interested in it. And I am. Let's go check it out. So first of all, I've got to plug it in. And this being a French car, it is a pain in the derriere. With the tracker installed, I hit the roads in this all-electric Peugeot E208, which I should add is a very decent electric hatchback, as I found out when I reviewed it. It's full of gadgets, lots of fun in the city, and being French, it's adorably quirky. And if you've seen that video review, then you'll know I put the car through its paces, flying down the motorway, testing its 0 to 100 time, chucking it into some corners on my top secret ultimate driving road, and then ultimately stopping to charge it. Now all of those ones and zeros were being recorded, but as I found out, that was just the tip of the binary iceberg when I paid a visit to Big Brother themselves for a rundown on my stats for the day. Okay, Francis, tell me about my trip that day. What could you see? So if I just drop this down, you can see the speed you were actually traveling, the fact that you were, were in a electric vehicle, what the posted road speed is of that, of that trip, and what the outside temperature was at the same time. And as you can see, here we've picked up a speeding event um, on the highway which is why there's an exclamation mark there. <laughs> yeah I'll just edit that out. <laughs> it was 19 degrees so I don't know whether it had any impact on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, these little triangles down here are other exceptions that have been breached and typically they're, they're events like harsh cornering. Harsh cornering events? Me? I, I, I find that very hard to believe. Well uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the good thing about um, the devices that we put into these vehicles is that the data doesn't lie. So the, the device itself picks, picks up on via the gyroscope and accelerometer on sideways movement and we can tell by g-forces how harsh your, see, you are cornering. Measuring the g's as well as the temperature. So you can see there that, that there was a harsh cornering event at this time uh, and, and it happened actually three times on that trip and these are the triangles that you can see here and as would be expected they are happening around corners but you can also see acceleration though right we can see harsh acceleration as well okay. so it, there's a harsh hard acceleration event that's happened um it looks like on as you're beginning a straight on that road if we just take that a bit further so we can that actually might have been the zero to 100 test i did right right <laughs> okay so you can again you can see the color changes and that's where we posted uh, a rule that's been triggered. So all the rules are set prior to the to the device being installed in the vehicle. So we basically go through a rule set of about a hundred different rules. If the car goes out of an area where there are charges and the battery charges say like 20%, you can also send alerts out to the fleet manager, yes. or to the driver. Is that is this someone actually have to do that or is it just instant automated? No, everything's automated. So basically, if, if I just quickly take it into the rules engine. So the rules engine is is customizable per customer. So not every fleet is the same. And as you can see, they're oh, broken into different that. categories. So under safety, we've got the braking, acceleration and cornering. And, and you can simply move the slide bar to change the effect um, that that rule has when it's triggered. So if it was a light passenger vehicle, for example, you would have it here. If it was a Nissan Leaf, which was extremely light, you may want to slide that down that way. That would adjust the G-force. You get alerts if a driver is driving without their seatbelt so as we, well? So we get seatbelt alerts, we get speeding alerts. Oh, and possible collisions? Uh, we definitely get collision alerts as, as well. So uh, recognising the G-force impact on our device. So when a, when a vehicle has a collision, there's a certain threshold that we set. So all of this information and this data is great for fleet managers to be able to plan their transition from diesel petrol based vehicles into electric. So let's look at a typical dashboard that a fleet manager would view. 80% of their fleet is low risk and 20% of their fleet is a mild risk. So they're doing great. And as a summary, they've traveled nearly 8,000 kilometers and they've 131 incidents where their drivers have breached either harsh braking, cornering, seatbelt or speeding. 
okay. conditions. We can also set thresholds so that if they run below, for example, 5%, there's an alert that's sent out to the driver. Efficiency measurements such as uh, distance, uh, what the uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometres is. So oh, look at that. We can tell them what the average energy price is. Um, cost is for the vehicles, what the equivalent fuel cost is. Oh, now that's interesting. So, okay, so that would have cost $3,000 so in that, petrol. Correct. And carbon emissions saved. Yes, and carbon. Oh, that is easy brilliant. So the, the carbon footprint savings is important, especially for our government clients. If they want to know how to make the worst uh, EV driver the best EV driver, then we will give them data that can drive their decisions. We have a connection to the uh, charge net infrastructure, so we um, have every single charging station that ChargeNet has. We have a product called the Green Fleet Dashboard. So you've purchased five EVs, they're in the fleet, what's going on? Here's what's going on. We've saved so far $8,000 in fuel costs. We have um, re reduced uh, okay. 9.4 metric tons of CO2. That's over a total distance of just under 58,000 Ks. And there's the electric energy that we've actually used that we've taken into the vehicle. So there's the snapshot that the sustainability manager wants to see. That's great, what else can you tell us? We can also show you what the driver behavior of the fleet has been. So under acceleration, how many times have we breached that the rule? How does it compare with other fleets? Are we above or below the benchmark? As well as speed and cornering, this gadget also measures charging, idling, braking, you name it. If I covered everything it did, the video would be an hour long. Suffice to say, it's a handy tool for fleets going electric, especially if they fuel their fleet with competitively priced and carbon zero certified electricity from Ecotricity. So head to ecotricity.co.nz to look at how much money and carbon your fleet can save today. Francis, I better end this. You've given me some great solid data. Thank you. Hit the subscribe button because next week's video, well, we're going to be reviewing a vehicle. It's electric, but it doesn't exactly go on land. Hit the subscribe button. See you next week.